Look at the camera. Look at the camera. It's only the best. Three cameras. And they're on phones. It's incredible, isn't it? The power of three. Okay. Welcome to Divorce Cafe, the podcast where we demystify, detangle and hopefully detox the legal processes that follow a separation with the experts in the relationship property world. On the home team today, Divorce Cafe. I'm Shelley Fennell. And I'm Tyna Henderson. To today's topic. One of the heartbreaking things about an adult relationship breakup is that the adults aren't the only ones to get hurt. Despite that, in the context of relationship property disputes, it's the adults who have all the rights. Only the adults have the right to be heard, the right to make claims, and in most cases, the adults are the only ones with lawyers. Lawyers and judges are quick to say that parents are standing up for their children in these cases, but is that enough? Why aren't we judging our relationship property laws by how well they protect our most vulnerable members, children? So here to discuss the problem and hopefully the solution <laughs> is much published family law academic, much loved lecturer and critic, Professor Mark Hennigan. Mark received his law degree with honours from the University of Otago, where he was the Dean of the Faculty of Law for 19 years. He is currently a Professor of Law at University of Auckland. He is a prolific author and a Fellow or Associate Fellow of numerous Royal Societies and inter International Academies of Family Law. That is a mouthful, that is impressive. <laughs> uh, we have had a sneak preview of a chapter he is finalising about children and property for a UK publication and, and it's got us excited. Yeah, we asked today's guest on to talk about what the law would look like if we really meant what we say about children's needs being important. Here to tell us that and why we should be worrying about it Professor Mark Hennigan, welcome to Divorce Cafe. Thank you, Tyner, and it's lovely to be here with two fine lawyers. Just to start off, I, I was involved in a major study that was um, uh, uh, sponsored by the Boren Foundation, who do great sponsoring, with the Children's Issues Centre at the University of Otago, and a massive survey of people who've been through relationship property. Mm. And in the area involving children, very common themes came through that children's lives changed. If they didn't get a decent deal in property, they had to move areas, they had to live in different places and sometimes had to rent, and it changed the children's whole perception of life, you know. I mean, not in a good the children, way. <laughs> going home to your home, uh, going yeah. and, and having, having, having basically um, uh, your, your friends around and your community, it makes such a difference. Mm. You know, my, they love their little area. We all love our areas, you know, all of us are moving around. So they feel it's, they've done something wrong or something's mm. happened to them and, and it changes so much. And children can form new friendships but it's quite tough at certain stages mm. of stages and of life. having to do it at the point that their parents they've already, parents be, <laughs> they're already experience, experience a major, major trauma and I, I I have the same personal experience but before we get into the guts of what you're talking about we always in our first segment we like to have our guests pick a random question from oh, right, from, the, random from the bucket right right uh, <laughs> some of them are sensible questions and some of them are Made if you could Shelley. be any TV or movie character for real, who would you be? I think I'd be Rumpole of the Bailey. Ah. Uh, you remember that program? You no. Guys are too young. <laughs> We've got the book at home. Rumpole of the Bailey was a beautiful TV series about a, an old uh, criminal defence lawyer and did some family stuff too uh, in the UK. And it was written by John Mortimer, who was a famous writer. He was a lawyer as well. Mm. But the wonderful thing that Rumpole always said, and I think he, he, he summed up the whole of legal practice in one word, he, he'd always say, there for the grace of God go oh, I with whatever yeah. his clients mm, uh, were. And, yeah. and he just had that ability to see. Yeah. And he had these English judges who didn't listen to his often mm. and he had to put up with their and he was far cleverer, far quicker. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> and, yeah. and it was it, it just inspired me. I've, I've always loved Rumpole the Bailey's. Okay, so the next segment we call the basics because it's where everybody sure. is brought up to speed with the topic yep, that yep. we're talking about, the children. This isn't a small question, but can you please draw a picture for us? of what is at stake here. So can you explain what do we know about how children fear after their parents separate? And I know you were just talking about sure, sure. that mm. study and, and how, yeah, well, how children well, fear. Well, well, children do well yeah. <laughs> if parents communicate in a civilised way yeah. and the environment isn't changed too much and they're able to see both parents together doing things to, to cooperate for them. Yeah. All those things make a difference for children. Yeah. In other words, 
the normality of their life doesn't change too much. Their parents still talk to each other. Yeah. They don't argue in front of the children, yeah. and, and they remain in a really stable and secure environment because particularly children with so much going on when you're mm -hmm. growing up, you need security. It's the fundamental need of, of all of mm -hmm. us, love and security. If you've got the love of both parents and you've got security, you can do it. Security of a home, home. and of yeah, finances. Yeah. Real, real security there. So you, you know where you are. And your environment is the most important thing. I mean, mm. you haven't, often children haven't traveled the world or anything. So for them, that neighborhood, that mm -hmm. school is everything. It's, it's their whole world. Yeah. So, so if you can keep those things secure and you keep the parents talking, so but as we know, that doesn't always happen, and, and that's the ideal. And when it does happen, all the research shows it works. But what we try to do sometimes is push people into something they're not, you know. So, so sometimes it, it, it doesn't work, and, and then parents get into dispute and want to argue over money and property, and the children kind of get left in the... Get left or, in used the weapons, or used as weapons. Or used as weapons, and get left in the background. Yeah. So I think we have to be very careful to try and, I mean, we are obligated as lawyers, as a duty to promote conciliation, mm -hmm. and, and in fact there's a new provision coming in August to get things done, you know, in, in a conciliatory, mm. uh, lowest cost, you'll see it's coming, it's, it's through the reform, 2019 reforms, it's coming into the uh, Care of Children Act uh, speedily, uh, lowest cost, and in a way Similar that keeps... Similar to those, the principles of the PRA. I oh, know, <laughs> they get ignored every day, I know, <laughs> but they're, they're there, and it's part yeah. of our obligation. Yeah. In fact, I was involved uh, with your wonderful sister, and we did a, a project um, uh, looking at whether or not there should be a further duty on family lawyers that even though they're required to act in the best interests of their client, because that's your obligation under the legal ethics, mm -hmm. they should also have an overriding duty to do nothing that will harm the best interests of children. Because mm. when it goes to court, that is the override, you know, but often yeah. in negotiations. What would happen mm. if they conflict though? What? Well, I think, I think you'd, you'd yeah, what you would have to say is the yeah. children's interest should, should yeah, be I, I because agree. they're paramount in the law. So, so you say to your client, look, I know you want this, yeah. but I have yeah. this duty. Yeah. And, and, and at that point it stops. But, but lawyers are encouraged to do things that yeah. they know aren't going to be yeah. good for yeah. the children, yeah. but, but, but they go ahead and do them anyway. And many of the lawyers that, um, that your wonderful sister interviewed, that Emily interviewed, um, said, I hate doing that. Yeah. And, and, mm. and they said, I hate another lawyer does that. You know, yeah. oh, we actually, we need to people get a bad tools. view of it. Most family lawyers don't want to do that. Yeah. They don't want to push no. a line and mm. try and encourage a client to say, this is, this is not the right way to go. Well, just yeah. think of, and try and try and give them a wider, a wider view of what will be better for everyone in the long yeah. run rather than, yeah. or at least just fire a, a nasty mm. affidavit and then try yeah. and do this and that and those sort of things because they do have ripple effects and, and often they break up the conversation and, and it falls, falls apart. Mm. But there's always some lawyers who will do that in every town. They get to know people, yeah. I'm going to go into that lawyer because they're going to rock them. Yeah. Yeah. And if we could have that duty, it would sort of stop that sort of, sort of behaviour. One would hope. There'd still be people who still try it on. Yeah. But at least we would know that's what we're what we're there for mm. so and by personal experience what is good for the children is often good for the adults anyway they well, just can't see it at that point in well, time well, when they're well, locked in combat I always say to them at the end of the day your children are around for the whole of yeah. your life and and you want to as you get older you want and you they want do remember I've had many them. students who come yeah. to me and say um, my parent didn't wouldn't pay any money for me and we had to move house and yeah. I'm never, I'm, they never really get over that no. you know and, and even though it's a parent they want to love they have that yeah. sort of Sort of, sort of block in, in that yeah. respect. So I always say to them, you know, at the end of the day, and I know this as a grandparent, as you get older, the love of your children yeah. is, when I mean, you love them, but yeah. them loving you is quite mm. important because <laughs> as you get older, they, they yeah. become your whole world, really. Yeah. You know, like I've moved from Dunedin up here just yeah. to be with my children and my grandchildren. Yeah. So I think it is that sort of thing that people don't see at that yeah, moment. Yeah, how do you that shift They're moving on to something else perception. and they have a bigger life. And, yeah. and, and I can understand it when they're young, they think I can have yeah. a better life and I, I, I've got a new partner, I want to get on with my yeah. life and children don't sort of yeah. matter so much. But yeah. They do, and they notice it. Yeah, they notice when they're and put they second. They hold it. They hold it. And they're very, they remember it for the rest of yeah. their life, you know. And I think it's the saddest thing because the greatest joy in life, as we all know, yeah. is, is that love between yeah. a, a parent and a child. And and, yeah. and there's no need for the system. The system should be doing everything possible to, yeah. to keep yeah. that going. It doesn't need yeah. to be an either or. It can be an and and. A how do you recognise what the parties mm -hmm. should each come out of this? What share they should each have? and the fact that they got together in the first place. To let, let me give you a classic example with two parents who actually cared deeply about their children. I was yeah. helping in a mediation. They cared very deeply. And so they actually did alternative nights staying in the home. So the children stayed in the home for three years. Yeah. They'd wow. pop in and pop out and pop in yeah. and pop. Mm. I and mean, it's pretty exhausting. They then started arguing over relationship property. And mm. it was a difference between I think seven hundred and fifty thousand, or, or, or and 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 the, um, the the mother needed probably about nine hundred million million dollars because she had given her all the time to buy an equivalent house. Yeah. They were arguing over this, you know, it was a couple hundred thousand difference, and 
I said to them, I said to her at lunchtime, well, what, what she, she said, look, I just need that much. And then I'll have an equivalent house to yeah. what the father has. Yeah. And then the children be going between. Yeah. He heard this, he just automatically said, 950, no problem. Because wow. their focus, and once it yeah. got away from the, you know, we're arguing over money to yeah. what's best for the children. You don't want children living yeah. in one house for half the week and what? going to some other house, yeah. which is not very Why good. don't you re read, um, so we did, a, we did an episode with Tony um, Lindra. Oh, Tony, I know Tony well, who, yes, yeah. Yeah, mediator and... So do I. He med mediated my mediation as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very smooth operator. Yeah. <laughs> we got to the end anyway, and we were a little short on time because of Auckland traffic and, and those sorts of things and flights. So we missed one question, which was a, a good lead into yours and he kindly um, emailed a response later on and, and I thought it might be a good one to put to you and we'll hear what you sure. think. Hmm. So the question that we asked him was, do you ever want to bring the children's wishes to the mediation table? Have you ever and how would you achieve that? So his answer was, while I would never want to do anything in a mediation that might upset the parties, I do and regularly in my opening and or theirs ask them briefly about their children. I then suggest that a huge benefit of them settling the matter today will be that their children will know that they have settled their fight or war, um, the last phrase being the one more likely to be used by children of separated parents. There are two further steps to this which I may or may not use. So the first one he said is to ask the parents to imagine that their children are for the day's purposes all between 14 and 16 years old and that they will be listening closely to what their parents say to each other and more importantly how they say it over the course of the day. Mm, good. And then the second step uh, is where the parties have a female child. In that case I, I remind them that, or I may remind them that there is no human on the planet that has a more, and I can really testify to this, <laughs> that has a more heightened and proper sense of fairness than a young woman between 13 and 18 <laughs> years. <laughs> I have a couple of them, so yeah, I definitely agree. If she perceives that one or other parent has not been treated fairly, then there are likely to be consequences for the parent she sees as acting unfairly. So obviously mm. you guys are on the same page about that. This may seem to be, uh, this may seem to some to be a little theatrical, but I have found over the years that parents listen very carefully to any comment that a mediator may make about their children. Indeed, I receive very commonly within the mediation or afterwards, thanks from the parties for raising their needs in that way. And I can testify to that. I yeah, it makes all the difference. I, yeah. I think it's fundamental. I mean, there are some, there are some mediators uh, here in, in Auckland who, who do involve the children, but not yeah. directly in the, in, the, in the thing. They may yeah. talk to them beforehand to get an, an overview, oh, so they right. talk to them directly, yeah. and I think that's, a, that's very, very helpful. There was a study yeah. done in Australia where um, an Australian academic, and she also does mediations, um, talked to the children beforehand, and yeah. the parents knew before their mediation what the children <laughs> thought about things. Yeah. And, and she believed strongly that yeah. um, the mediations were much, much more effective. I did ask because she sort of said we had great success because I never believed, cause we, you know, as family lawyers, there's always cases that are just something goes off the rails and very hard to get back on. Yeah. Mm. She did say these were people who wanted to settle anyway. Yes. Right. And you get these people who, yeah. who, who, are, who are just don't want to for some reason. It's hard to explain. There's all sorts of things going on in people's lives. Well, like they're much harder to, to, to get over yeah. the line. But those who want to, when they hear what their children, they yeah. automatically just look at things differently, as, as Tony said. Yeah. You know? So I think it, it does it does work because at the end of the day, you've got to go back and face the children. Yeah. You know, mm. If you've yeah. left one parent in a, in a kind of a, a poor neighbourhood and happened to move and you say, well, this is what's happened. How could, how could the other party do that to us? Well, it's the yeah. mother or the father. Yeah, and and a very famous uh, mediator as a judge was Judge uh, Black who went over in Wellington Eden. It was a family court was about the size of this table, so he, he avoided having any hearings. <laughs> and all the walls were painted oh. red. So he had a lot of mediations and it actually worked very He always started by getting them to say something nice about the other party. And I mm. that's important because no matter how much they're in conflict, they obviously saw good things about each yeah. other at a certain point. Yeah. You just remind them that there are good qualities there. We've all got bad qualities. And yeah. But the, the good qualities just remind you, yes, this is a, this, this mm. is a person who, who, who and I can. And Tony was quite effective because he also got us to say good things but in relation to the children it's at the, the children. beginning as well. So talking about how important yeah. the other person's role was as a parent allows um, that to be spoken at the mediation and, yeah, and it, that's it, when you say okay that is important as it, a parent to it, me. It's fundamental and of course yeah. as a parent you know one of your obligations as a guardianship is the development of the children's yeah. you know, brain and if they're going through stress they can't do it. They mm. don't, I coach a lot of junior sport and you knew when yeah. things weren't going mm. so well at home and, if you and could, kids just yeah. behave really badly yeah. and not like normal and you knew straight away there was something going on. I mean, wow. yeah. Children, and, children and are very perceptive they pick yeah. it up instantly because they, they respond. Mm. Well, and they have to because mm. for survival your parents mm. say yeah. 
yeah. and and if there's not something not right, it it, it must they had nightmares and all sorts yeah. of things go on. You know, so yeah. we've, we've got to avoid yeah. that. And if so, if you know that there's something that you can do to affect that, you know, then you can act on it. And why wouldn't you? And I think reminding parents of that is important yes. because I think mm. most parents sort of you know, you get some people are just so focused on on, on revenge or yeah. getting back at the other party that they they don't want to think about those those things. Mm. And, and 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 some parents to haven't really done as much parenting but the joy of it once you because parents pick it up if, if yeah. you are there for children they will give you so much more back than you can ever give to them mm. but they also know people who just sort of pat them on the head and don't yeah. show any interest in them too very quickly yeah. <laughs> and if they can look forward to the day so what happened with my kids is a couple of years on we were communicating really well we'd settled really well at that point and the kids would say oh, I'm so happy that you guys parent together thank you mum I re you know that has made my life so much better I love the fact that you and That's dad important. are talking even when we were <laughs> developed Maybe not you know like that well. Yeah, yeah well no but we were talking and then it was to do a punishment you know we always decide together what were going to be the consequences of, of bad behavior they still actually preferred that because we were working together but, and, and that, that meant they were safe right? and that, stable. That's the most important thing yeah. exactly. just a recent someone else helping out and, and, and uh, the, 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 the little boy, quite young, yeah. said, because um, we were having some contact with Dad, but he, he said to him, I want to see you be with you and Mum, you, you yeah. and Dad together sometimes. Yeah. And, and the Dad wasn't didn't want that at that stage. No. We didn't see that for the child seem to get gives that even extra level of safety. No. And it's pretty hard if you're at a park and both yeah. of you are there. It's not going right. to end the world. Yeah. But it's those little things that build up to that idea that they're still my parents, yeah, they still talk yeah. to each other, I'm all right. Every, the world you know. is okay. The yeah. saddest thing I ever saw was, a, they used it in the family court actually, I don't know why they advertised the family court, and it was a real little boy and he, he came on and he said, Dad dots me off from contact, he drops me at the end of the street, I have to walk up because he won't drop me off oh, at once. God. And he just started crying, I cry every time yeah. I think of it. Oh, thinking, yeah. It's such a small gesture, oh, if he just came up the door, Johnny's back and how are you and everything yeah. all right, you know, it would make Someone's all the difference to that boy. Okay. But then, then, you know, you've got to go up there, it's like, he's the one that's banished. suffering, he's been punished yeah. for, 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 yeah. for, for, for oh, God. You know. yeah. But it's those little things we parents have to realise make oh, all the difference. Yeah. No matter what no. your feelings are, you have to put them to one side. We always really? have to do that in all aspects of life. Yeah. And so for this boy, he's still his mother. You yeah. may have concerns about them. He's still his father. You know, mm. it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, children, and know. that's where the you children. Know, the stuff you keep right out of their way. You know, if yeah. you can get that, that makes all the difference. Yeah. You know? I, I agree. I mm. totally agree. All right. Okay. So the next section um, of the podcast is uh, stuff we find interesting, for want of a better name. Um, but yeah, th these are the. Um, the some of the questions that we've had that we'd love sure. to put before you so uh, another the first one i guess the relevant one is what law currently exists what is already on the law books to prioritize children's interests in a relationship property context yeah well, the law is pretty clear it's just <laughs> it's amazing how it's not operated yeah um, section 26 as you well know the court shall uh, must, sorry must must have regard to the interests of children in terms of when they're making a, a relationship property um, uh, division in, in mm. a court hearing uh, and, and do what they think is just. Unfortunately, it's hardly ever argued, mm. hardly ever, and the judge should ask, look, mm. I, I must have regard, but that doesn't seem to happen. Yeah. So mm. I mean, someone's. I've well, never had anybody write to me and say, oh, I'm going for it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do you, I'm going to go for an order under t section 26, I'm going to get the family home settled on the children. Nobody's right. ever threatened me with that. They've threatened me with occupation, rent and, yeah, sure. you know, uh, post but, but separation. The, but, but even the judge should have some requirement yeah. for it, must have regard to the interests of children. Yeah. And so, the, but, but it's because I think, and, and, and the, the t section has been interpreted very narrowly by judges, they say, oh, if children have got special needs or some exception, they call it an mm. exceptional case where a child might need, we might, can, to be considered in every case. Something that can outweigh the importantness of adults. Of adults, yeah, that's yeah. right. Because the, the concern they have, and, and the Law Society had the same concern when they put submissions in with, because uh, the Law Commission think the section should be strengthened, which I agree with, yeah. said, oh, well, it's just between adults, and people will game it. What a, what a, what a very we'll cynical way to look at yeah. what well, they'll game it to try and get more for themselves. Yeah, so rather some than kids yeah. will end up winning. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And then they said, you know, and, and, and parents will argue more because of it. No, to remind them, <laughs> that, 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 that remind them that the yeah. children's 
yeah. this property thing has outcomes for children yeah. and, and, and we need to consider what impacts it's going to have on them. And, yeah. you know, yeah. you can make some, give some property to them, but it just reminds you of the other things we've just been talking about. Mm. So what's the problem? It's sort of like, and, and they have this principle as, and, and how you describe it, I'll get you to do that, as, as wonderful, this idea that we must have a clean bracelet and get on, on with their lives. But you, you never have a clean break from your children. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we <Thankfully. didn't. laughs> well, You wouldn't want to. Yeah. No. So, and just back to Section 26. So, um, Section 26 actually has that second part which allows the court to make an order. It can for the children. Settle, of settle children. property on the children. Yeah. You're saying, say, look, you have this property basically. Mm. And uh, I think that's really, really, really important because there may be situations where, well, in every situation it should be considered, I believe, because yeah. it says must have regard to. Mm. Yeah. In other words, how do we know they've had regard to when it's never mentioned? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. It's mandatory. Parliament's put a mandatory consideration, which is totally ignored, and I'd say 98, and, and in order cases. that that yeah, it, it's a tool that isn't picked up, no. and it feels to me like um, section 15 about the um, division of functions, sure. unequal sharing. It feels like section 182 yeah. with the busting. This, into this trust. is even more so. This is even more so. Yeah. Why one. don't we? Yeah. It should be used much more. And then the other section, which says have particular regard, mm. which means particular means slightly higher than mm. other interests mm. um, with regard to occupation of the home. The children need to, to be in the home. And again, the courts say, oh, it's just one thing we have to do. It's a broad discretion. It's it, 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 it is a discretion, but yeah. it's a discretion which gives, yeah. and they always give weight to the selling the property, yeah. basically. Yeah. Now, if, if it's particular regard to the interest of children and other interests can all be taken to account, these seem to trump it. So the particular regard yeah. doesn't get applied yeah. Um, yeah. again. Yeah. So that's section 27, um, which is that and section, 28A, yeah, yeah. section that you apply under to say, um, I'd like the ability to stay on in the house, despite the fact that it's jointly owned. 28A, which you're talking about yeah. there. That was put um, in to make it, because uh, often the houses were sold and people had to move on. Parliament said, we'll put a strong provision in. Mm. It still hasn't made a lot of difference. Mm. I mean, there are a few examples, which we'll discuss, um, mm. where judges do take it seriously. Because again, it comes back to children's fundamental right, UN conventional right of security. Mm. And the house is their secure mm. base, you know, all of us. Look at all the people that said they've been made homeless recently mm. with the floods and that. It's mm. a terrible thing when you, when you push mm. out of your home. And for children, it's even, they've got yeah. no it's control a over it. It's lifetime consequences. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Okay, so we've also got um, United ne Nations conventions on the rights Which of children. Which we've signed up to. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, tell us um, just Well, we briefly. don't do particularly well on those because um, basically, you know, taking into account children's views often doesn't happen the way, the way it should. Um, ensuring Article that children 12. have economic security and all, and, and, and all the rest of it. Um, overriding interest, best interest of children are mm. primary consideration, even when it's in the Act <laughs> that I've taken account yeah, of. Yeah. So, you know, the, I, I'm involved with the Children's Rights Alliance and we put submissions, people have been over to the UN and we put submissions in. And um, Aotearoa should be a leader in this, but we're, we're still yeah. not doing what, 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 what we say we should be doing. And I think it's a lot of it's to do with an entrenched way that the professional judiciary seat that's done a certain way, because yeah. you hear from the adults, and when it's about money, it's an adult issue, it's nothing to do with children, they kind of segregate these things. Mm. But the law actually says you should at least consider them, even if yeah. you don't make the order. But And if you consider them, that in itself changes the, the whole nature should. of the proceedings. Or it should, yeah. And makes it more easy to then access. If mm. they don't give you property under this, they might use Section 28 to give you occupation. Yeah. In other words, it just opens yes. up a, a way of thinking mm. and, and, a, and, a mindset, and a mindset yeah. to kind of say, so how is this property uh, settlement decision going to affect the children? Yeah. I mean, the same provisions are, are in, 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 in the UK cases. And, and But again, if you look at the cases, yeah. it's definitely Yeah, well, that's the next question. What examples have you seen of children's interests um, being given any primacy? in relationship property proceedings? Well, the, the, the very rare, I mean, Section 26 has only been used in sort of cases involving someone with a major disability who needs some special needs, and that, those, so they see it as absolutely exceptional. Whereas the Act doesn't say that. It says mm. it's a general principle that should mm. be considered. Mm -hmm. I've seen some brave decisions um, and good decisions with regard to occupation orders. Um, some judges, um, uh, I know um, Judge June Johnson, for example, said, you know, these children need a stable home. Judge Walker, and we must give them credit for that. She also looked at children's right to security and said, we've got to give them a bit more time in, in the home. Mm. And I think those things make, make a difference, but they are the exceptions. Mm. You know, and during this chapter, you find two or three, you know, that the, yeah. the, and so the, so the property six continues months, months. to be owned jointly until yeah. the children have left home, for example. Yeah, yeah. And, and, one and I can understand there's, there's economic needs and things, but, yeah. but but in, in some cases, even when the other party's got plenty of money to, yeah. to, 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 do, to do things, and if you put your children first, you, yeah. but that couple I talked about for three years, they, 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 they just came in and mm, out of the home. Yeah. That, that was fantastic. Yeah. And not everyone can afford that. So there oh, are some right. situations where it gets a bit tough. And that's where I think the public 
aspects of family worship come in and say, well, what can yeah. we do for people? Because yeah. we don't want them to, to disrupt these children. Yeah. It's a bit like being mm. disrupted by the floods. We're, we're actually, right. MB is yeah. giving people places to live because of the floods. We don't yeah. care about children. We have yeah. to move here and move yeah. there, which is equally as bad. It's, so yeah. you're saying, should there be government funding? Yeah, for those we, who have less resources, yeah. because mm. those resources have many more options. They're like most things in life, they have mm. miles of You've options. You've got two so houses. They've got several holiday yeah. homes and houses and things yeah. everywhere. So they, mm. they don't have to, the children don't have to move in those circumstances. Mm. But in, in many others, they do. So mm. some yeah. support for that would make it a big difference to, to, to yeah. so many children's lives because yeah. mm. it's a major issue for children. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that, that sort of answer brings us to uh, the, the um, story part of the section. I love the story is, part. Yeah. yeah, we love a good case mm -hmm. um, and it's the best part of um, lawyering, I think, in law school. Um, one that I read um, after seeing it in your chapter um, was Lawrence and Baker. And yeah, if um, I will run us through very quickly sure, the, the facts absolutely. of that one and then we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So the parties were separated uh, in 2008 after a 14 year relationship. They had two children at the time of the family court hearing were 14 and 17. Um, and Mr. Lawrence went on to marry again. So it was, uh, what are we, eight years after separation that, that it gets to the family court. Sorry, four years after separation. And Mr. Lawrence went on to marry, he moved to Singapore, he had another baby with a new partner. He then applied to the court and said, uh, I'd like my money out of the family home, please. Ms. Baker, not her real name, uh, hadn't worked during the relationship. Uh, she'd cared for the children. She had remained in the family home after separation, kept caring for the children who stayed with their, at their local school. Uh, when, when Mr. Lawrence applied for that order for sale, she asked the court to give her the right to stay in the home with the children until they finished high school. And in the family court, Judge Burns uh, granted Ms. Baker the occupation order. He, he Congratulations to David Burns. Yeah, well done. He's, a, he's awesome, like him very much. Um, so he, he looked at that section 28A um, and said, uh, we didn't just look at it, he swallowed it and it's part of his being, I think, <laughs> that, that um, he, his job as a judge is to balance up everybody's interests but not to subsume the children's ones. The children's yeah. ones are right up there. So he had a creative solution that involved selling some other um, property in Australia. Unfortunately, there were a couple of little um, things that um, went the wrong way, a couple of little mistakes that, that enabled the High Court judge to overturn the order that he made, which gave the mum and the children the right to stay in the home until the kids had pretty much finished high school. Yeah, so, which was meant an eight and a half year um, occupation, the which the High Court judge, when it got to the High Court, uh, Mr. Lawrence appealed it to the High Court, um, said that was unprecedented. He hadn't seen such a long occupation <laughs> order. And he overturned that order and shortened the right of occupation. And his reasoning was, after pointing out that the, um, an occupation order in granting or considering an occupation order, the judge has a discretion, but that uh, the interests of any minor or dependent children being housed should be um, a, a consideration. He then goes on to say, um, while the accommodation needs of minor or dependent children must always be taken into account, these should be balanced against all other relevant <laughs> considerations in the particular case, including the desirability of providing the parties with a clean break in their financial affairs so that they can oh. re-establish themselves. Now, my question for you, how do you fight this mythical clean break principle when it doesn't appear anywhere in the law, except perhaps on the walls, the toilet walls in the Northern Club? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what, what, is your, um, yeah, I, what are your I, thoughts I, on reading well, that I'm, case? Well, I'm dead against it. It, it affects um, uh, lots of things in relationship property because children are there for your life. So you can't clean break from children, and children are affected by property decisions. So a clean break just totally disadvantages them, and it also disadvantages the party who has less resources because Always. a clean break for them means, and even the law commissioner have recommended it at the Pfizer payment moment. So they're saying clean break. You know, yeah. I managed to convince them. I have many meetings. Mm, they yeah. this, this is not in the legislation. And even then, the High Court saying must be balanced. It says have particular regard. Yeah. It didn't say these interests are all equal. Mm. Have to be you know, when you have particular regard to this one. It's going to be something pretty weighty. Yeah. Now we have a person here who who has plenty of resources, yeah. doesn't need the money, yeah. and, and can afford to, to 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 let them stay in there a bit longer, which makes yeah, it. He had a do. significant income, the court said, and she hadn't worked during the relationship, and there was separate property that. Yeah, he well, selling had. the house is not going to help her at all because she'll have to move mm. because we're it's probably in a pretty good area if he's a significant income, so they're going to have to well, move somewhere yeah. else. And that was one of the points. So the High Court judge said that the Family Court judge had assumed that the 
wife, that Miss, uh, the mother, wouldn't be able to afford to buy again in the same neighbourhood. And he said, but there was no evidence <laughs> led of that. Well, you, it, you, can take you, judicial no, you can take judicial notice of things. You don't have to. It's pretty obvious in Auckland if you sell a house and you haven't got an income, you've got half the amount. <laughs> and to no buy, income. And half the amount. Yeah. Mo the average price is over a million. So mm. $500,000 mm. is not... You'd be yeah. lucky to get anything. You'd have to yeah. move so far mm. out of Auckland yeah. to, to, to get a house. And, and then what and happens it, with schooling? I know, what it, happens it, it, it kills them. everything for the yeah. child. And that's what came through in our study. Yeah. And, and people are very frustrated by that. And I, I think this is why it's important to do these podcasts, yeah. to remind people that the price is paid by the, the judge goes, well, I think I balanced the consideration, I had yeah. a discretion, I took it into account, but I ignored it, and then I took this into account, and, and, and away they go. And, and I'm sure that yeah. the, um, the father had a powerful the lawyer, yeah. he's got a new relationship, he wants the money out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, is, what you say to his children. You say, well, obviously his money's more important than our well-being, yeah. sadly. That's what I have to, you'd have to say, because at the end of the day, you don't need it, you know. I mean... Hopefully, most parents leave a lot of their money to their children. Yeah. They didn't give it to them while they were alive as well. Yeah. You know? yeah. And young when they need yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. When they need <laughs> it, yeah. Because being in that neighbourhood, it's just so crucial. I, I just yeah. think I'm so lucky. Yeah. And, and, and when parents are together, children can move around. Even that can be stressful. They can. But when parents aren't together, it's just much harder. Mm. Absolutely. Unless they're moving to an area where they've got a lot of family yeah. and other things around, that doesn't happen. But the whole no. thing, it's really difficult, you know. Mm. Families do move and, and it's quite common. But unfortunately, one of the, the longitudinal studies, that longitudinal study done through the psychology year, yeah. 1972, they found surprisingly that many children move a lot more than we think. And a lot of it may be because of these, mm. these sort of yeah, situations. Right. And it does have consequences yeah. um, for children. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so what would a system that pri prioritise children's needs uh, children's need look like? What would be better than what we have now? Well, I think the Law Commission has done a, a pretty good job, and I, and I was there when they released their report with yeah. uh, the wonderful Andrew Beecroft, too, who was Commissioner for Children at the time, and he was, he was chairing very, very happily. So when was that report? That report came out, the Law Commission report, about 2020, I think. Mm, that was the one that it's talked still, about still changes, the FISA, yeah, and yeah. those oh, sorts right, of things, yeah, which yeah, you yeah, made yeah, a submission yeah, yeah. on. The many, and, many, many pages, yeah, that, yeah, that, that report. On this one, they, they, they wanted a lawyer to be appointed for children in these cases. Yeah. Cause without a lawyer there to kind of yeah. put the argument, you don't, mm. you don't hear it because mm. parties uh, don't put it. So, so that's a, a procedural thing will make a big difference. Yeah. And lawyer, you know, so you find out what the circumstances are for the children, you find out how important it is for the children and that those sort of things. Mm. It gets before the court, which will change the, the landscape. Yeah, like that, it will. Because yeah. there's a lot at stake once you're at court, right? There's costs awards in family court cases, and there's an, uh, I wondered whether a costs sanction for um, over litigating or for too aggressively litigating or for not putting the children's interests. I agree. Um, oh, that's a good or idea. To doing too. something that's like manifestly unjust. That, 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 that's, or, right, that, mm. that's a really good idea. What was surprising was that the New Zealand Law Society opposed the Law Commission proposal, saying, you know, people, it'll just make them fight more. Yeah. <laughs> it's about their children. Yeah. If they're going to fight about that, there's something yeah. awful. People will game it. Well, I don't think people will necessarily game it because it's rather obvious when someone has a lesser of an income and mm. can't afford a house. It's, it's pretty mm. obvious. Well, perhaps and the people we deal that with would that game it are probably gaming it anyway, <laughs> but there would well, be they're some. they're gaming it the other way, saying, I yeah. need this money right now when yeah. they don't actually need yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And perhaps Just we wait and see how bad the problem is and then we try and fix it once yeah. that problem comes up. And maybe it's about um, showing lawyers that that is an option to dust off and become the new, you know, Vanessa Brunton or the new Absolutely. Lady Deb Chambers and, um, and use these sections and actually knock over some tables. Yeah, I think that's right because I think when it, when it comes to relationship property, people assume that the children, it doesn't matter for the children, but yeah. it, it, it's all connected. Mm. Finances and money are important for children, mm. you know, for their life, you know. Yeah. What about bringing back... It, when I remember in the olden days when I first um, was admitted, you used to get six hours free marriage guidance oh, counselling. Oh, that was the greatest thing out, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I think we, I was there when, uh, uh, Judith Collins who took it over, who was the minister? I can't remember who the minister was. Um, he's gone, he's chair of Radio New Zealand, no, Television New Zealand. Um, he was, uh, he gave this talk at a target. I, yeah. I went down there and said, you must be joking. He said, these are matters are purely private. We'll leave it totally to these people to do it. We'll, we'll take all the money out and they have to yeah. pay for it. It's not mm. private because every child that doesn't get the things they deserve is we yeah. all, the public mm. effect. Yeah. I see family law is actually probably about 95% public now. It's always since yeah, most, yeah. I mean, yeah. Ringa is public, but mostly all of it has a public yeah. impact. So yeah. we should consider yeah. it that way. And they took it out because those people made a big difference for a number of things. I talked to my postgraduate class. They met individually with people and mm. they were very senior counsellors. Yeah. And then they saw, well, this person, maybe they're not ready to be in the same room together. Mm. These days they, they fire people and they have to go along. That's why people don't turn up to it. Dispute mm. resolution yeah. 
you don't know people. If someone's interviewed you and get to know them, I trust this person. I don't yeah. mind being in a room with yeah. them and my partner. Or, yeah. no, yeah. I'm not ready yet. And yeah. sometimes I go on for 12. Yeah. And yeah. it made people feel welcome and understood by the system. Yeah. And one of my most um, cynical colleagues at Otago went through, well, he couldn't speak highly enough of it when wow. he had to go through that situation. But yeah. Yeah. That, that filtering process is so important. Yeah. Yeah. People are anxious. And yeah. they were all middle-aged women, I knew many of them, who were very experienced and just had that ability yeah. to, re look, can you come and have a chat to me? We'll see what we can do. Mm. Meet one person and, you, and you're fine. Saying, go to a dispute resolution with someone you don't know yeah. with this other person. Yeah. That's too cold for most yeah. people. They're not ready. What, what about, so we've got and FDR. we've prepared them for it, you know, yeah. Yeah, uh, what about FDR, so family dispute resolution? It what if we funded that better? Or even, when I was writing my notes for this, what if we had top lawyers and mediators working on a like a roster pro bono well, to that, step that, in as mediators? That did happen. I mean, um, uh, Principal Family Court Judge Peter Bosham years ago interviewed that sort of early intervention process, and it was mainly very senior lawyers mm. um, who sat down with both parties with their lawyers and worked at it, and it was it was quite successful. Mm. You got a bit of a rap over the knuckles from the government because uh, because they used some money which they didn't hadn't necessarily a, yeah. approved, and they kind of kind of that's where they they kind of yeah, came back, back on in. that. But but mm. it actually worked very very well mm. because if you've got a, a senior lawyer you can trust, mm. you know more and more Tony Lendrums out mm. there, and, and 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 good lawyers there, you can work things out pretty well mm. and, and yeah. bring in all sorts of things without going because once you're in a formal court process, it just it, it kills it. Yeah. Yep. And you all say that. I mean, very few people come out of Well, there's a court one upping going on, isn't all, there? All the time. And, uh, because you have to take positions and you have to kind of mm -hmm. push things And through. the less time you spend together or with someone trained like that, the more entrenched your positions get. Of course. And it half is. the people don't know the law as well and they're not really. Necessary. Well, when people say something that negative about you, you have yeah. to say something negative, which yeah, is even, you know. Yeah, and you're and hurt. It gets off, off, and, the, off yeah. the trail. So I, I do yeah. think having more efficient processes where people can really lay it out. And, and lawyers that do say, well, what about your children? You know, yeah. in other words, we need to make sure yeah. that everyone's, the children are central on the table in, in terms of their interests yeah. and, and their well-being. Yeah, well, that brings us to the next question. Are lawyers the problem here, and what could we be doing better? Well, I think sometimes the lawyers are the problem. Uh, not always. I think there are excellent lawyers and, yeah. and, and lawyers who are very conscious. And the study that, that I did with your, with your sister, Emily, um, shows there's some very conscientious lawyers who, who, who want to make sure the children's interests come out top and everything that they, that they do. You know, there are creative solutions. That, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah. How do we make this work? You know, know. How do we make this work in a way that, yes, you're not going to be out of money, but on the other hand, the children are going to... How, how do we, rather than, I want this and you want that? Because yeah. underlying it all, the fundamental interests must be what's best for our yeah. children. Mm. And then we work a way to do it. You know, and your family will be better for it yeah. in the end. Well, you will yeah. have a much... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But situational things come in. If, if a person gets a new partner, that adds a pressure. Yes. Well, the studies show that. And suddenly yeah. your partner's saying, well, are you giving this money to your, to your family? We're, yeah. we're a family yeah. now. And that, that makes it really hard yeah. because because there's a stress there in, yeah. in that sense. So I wish people wouldn't rush off to have new partners straight away. <laughs> that, that, that creates great stress. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing is easy in this. Is it? No, because there's, there's a bit situation, and then their mates say, "Well, you, you, what are you doing? You, you, it's your house, you know, mate. You know, yeah. or, or something. You know, things things get into that way. But if we could have, I think, I think, generally, family court lawyers are very focused on what's best for everyone involved. Yeah. I, I, that's my common understanding yeah. of it. I think. Mm. But um, there's always the odd rogue that doesn't do that, and that that tends to let everyone down, and it pushes everything in a certain in a certain direction. I think the time frames are very slow. That that is frustrating for people because when they're wanting to settle something like property or that, it just yeah. takes forever. Yeah. And I think that's a good provision to put in. But how are we going to yeah. get there? Because the yeah. court seems to be clogged up with all sorts of. Mm. Sort of so we need, as you say, other methods, I and mean, that's a good idea to, yeah. to get some things done. Like I think contact could be resolved through those things. It's contact, yeah. but mm. contact is tricky because often, and it's tricky for people because often one party um, is happy, the other party to have contact, but gradually over time. Yeah. The other party wants to go to straight 50 50 mm. and that's when they know this person hasn't had, has a lot of child schools it's too much for them yeah. mm. so that party just said i'm losing if i don't get 50 50. well and the you've top. got uh, you've but got the weight of child support yeah, so i reckon a plan, a plan. Yeah, absolutely yeah. and the child support thing the child another support skews no, I'm, I'm things right if i get 50 50 i'll pay less I'll child pay support. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that has skewed things, things terribly mm. because i think it, yeah if, if a child's been with one parent mostly especially yeah. with their young yeah. they need time they to do it in a way that they're comfortable yeah. just saying he, here you go yeah. and they often end up with with, with a grandmother something doing that doing it which yeah. is it's fine but it's not quite the same no. and the parent 
and it can be used as a way of controlling. Yeah. Hey, I've got 50% of the yeah. tool, and I'll, and I'll use it whenever I want to. Yeah. You know, this weekend yeah. I can't do it, next weekend I can't, but the weekend after I'm demanding yeah. it, you know, mm. and that's hard yeah. on children too. Yeah. It's educating people that children need routine and, yes. and, and, and comfort. And not and too much And if they're not change. comfortable, not yet, change gradually over yeah. time and they can adjust, like all of us can, you know. Yeah. It's those sort of things, and I think we need to educate. I think it starts right back through the, through the, through the early years at school. We don't educate people how to, to deal with conflict, how not sometimes pushing your point of view. The yeah. greatest act of love to say, look, it's not the right thing for me to see the child. Yeah. They've got something else on. Yeah. You, you go to that. That's, and all the part without, it's, it's edu- but without saying you've yeah. lost something, you've yeah. actually done yeah. a great act of love. You know. Yes, exactly. Well, You're well, a great person for doing that. But and it's also building trust over time. It is. It I, is. We had that exact scenario where I mostly had the kids, and then yeah. we moved over three years to fifty-fifty. That's the time. And it was it. an element of trust. And when they were older, they they really loved it. And I then know. I get more freedom at of, that of course, point. Of course, of course. You know, but doing it straight away is is very stressful solution. for the children. For the yeah. so, so it's got to trust each people. other yeah. 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 and be trustworthy. And the research shows yeah. that, you know, that, that, yeah. that the courts, another concept they use, which is not in the legislation, shared care. It's not even the legislation. Yeah. And, and, they, and they kind of feel they've got to let everyone go away with something yeah. rather than saying, well, in the end, you want to get to that. Yes. But if you do it too fast, it creates tension, yes. it creates all sorts of yeah. negativities yeah. for the children and others. Yeah. And so a plan is a good idea yeah. and move I forward. So, so yeah. most research shows that because each yeah. child has to adjust in their own way. Yes. Some children are, are very resilient, they'll adjust to most things. And yes. some children, these yeah. things, you know, mm. they're yeah. all on different scales of emotional uh, adaptability. And too much things happening at once, yeah. move, having to move and then care, yeah. to, that, that yeah. becomes an absolute nightmare. Yeah. And I see too many cases where children are required to to, to go and live some, be somewhere in the weekend when they want to be with their I friends know, or play their sport. Know, exactly. And no one's talked to them. And, get, and it's so intense I, with I, their parents. One couple of them before I left, I was talking to them. These children were travelling four hours on a bus to Wanaka, oh. spend every weekend and four hours back, and yeah. they said, we're really tired. <laughs> you know? I, I couldn't do that myself. Even, even that, if it was yeah. someone you really wanted yeah. to see. Yeah. You know? But it was sort of to make it so they could yeah. see. And it just has no, yeah. no thought given to that. So. I think because again the parties are visible, yeah. we want both to go away. There's a sort of a we want both to go away with something. Courts do that yeah. a lot, but sometimes you have to say, well, let's do it over time. I just think we need to and that's what counsel work at the for time the of the child, the yeah. speed of the child, the time. Yeah. When the courts start, there was a lot of talk about needs of children. It's all seemed to have gone. We, yeah. We've lost that that process, you know. Mm. When the family court was set up, there was a lot of courses on it. There was a lot of talk about those. Yeah. We don't talk about those things as much now. I don't think we just this is what we do. You know, I'm a, case, lawyer, I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer expert. You know, for people. Yeah, we, we, I just think that the, the educational side of what's good mm-hmm. for children is, is not as deep as it, as it could be. Yeah. And I think we get into routines, institutions, and, and it, it's like, well, shared care is the normal around here, and you have to yeah. do something exceptional yeah. to fall outside yeah. that. Mm. that. That's this child is unique. It's interesting, yeah. and the wording says this particular child, yeah. not every child in New Zealand. You know, I remember yeah. emphasizing that when it first came in and we don't do that. Yeah. I mean, discretion is always risky, but at least it gives you the chance yeah. to say, we'll adapt something for this child. Let's understand yeah. this child. Well, we got some examples and mm. I found some examples and, and we should applaud those um, mm. judges. And yeah. I think, but again, it's just being true to the wording and spirit yeah. of the legal. It's not as if we're making this stuff up. No, yeah. the Lord's Shall have regard there. to, yeah. Yeah. particularly regard to. I mean, yeah. those things are very, very yeah. clear. And, and, and I think it happens in every, it's one of the, Strength and weaknesses of a specialised system. This is the way we do it. Yeah. Whereas it's no, the legislation yeah. determine, determines how, how we do it. I was surprised that High Court judge would be able to bring in all these other interests, yeah. whereas it's not. I mean, there are other interests to be considered, but when it's particular regard, it's got to be pretty strong to I outweigh know. that particular, mm, particular yeah. regard, yeah. I would have thought. With that no they're saying they're even, they're not even. Yeah. Parliament yeah. didn't make yeah. them even. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Have we answered this question? Yeah, we've maybe answered. Yeah, do do you think children should have lawyers in PRA a- cases? Absolutely, I think that's what the law commission has yeah. recommended, and I think that will make it totally visible, and yeah. they'll develop the skills to put those yeah. arguments. It takes a while. I mean, you. you but yeah. like in that example where they're travelling four hours each way, that's where the lawyer can say, um. <laughs> you know, how do they get from here to here? Maybe the dad has to come to Wanaka every now and yeah. again for a week. And that's the real problem. I mean, you've got to have yeah. lawyers that are there saying, oh, my focus is... Yeah. Because, because in the end, the court, as you know, likes lawyers who tell, tell them the things they want to hear. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not everybody. <laughs> I, know, I know, but you've got to try to persuade them that yeah. you yes. hear these things right. as well. Yeah. Without, without them feeling threatened yeah. by it. Say, look, yeah. this is important. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a skill. Is, yeah. It's a skill mm. to do that. I think yeah. that's important. Because that, that's how we change it. Specialised courts get into routines. It's like yeah. everything. You're like, you know, all in institutions, if yeah. you look at them, they become self-initiating yeah. of their own, what's, what works for them. Self-limiting. We get, we get through this case and we get through this case and we do this and we do that and mm. we don't have, 
it's racing. too much energy to yeah, yeah, otherwise. Yeah. Well, it is, but, but that's, that's what it's yeah. all about. That's mm. When the court started, this was an mm -hmm. opportunity, but it, it, it happens, look, I don't blame the court, it happens to every institution I've ever yeah. looked at, you know. Mm. Well, the only we, way to keep it honest is like yeah. what we're doing here is yeah. eternal vigilance. Yeah. Are we getting it right? Yeah. yeah. You know, because people don't come back and, and do a questionnaire about it. You yeah. know? And you know, we can all take responsibility as lawyers, you know, um, as parents. Lecturers. We can take, <laughs> as lecturers, yeah, yeah. we can take responsibility for when we can make a difference on it and um, yeah. One of the things we don't do enough of, I, I hear a lot from students who have been through it and, and, and you get these. They did, one of my colleagues uh, over in the UK, she did a study where uh, they looked at the consequences of judges' decisions. Oh, Most yeah. of the judges didn't want to know what they were right. and really were devastated when they saw what happened. Mm. I think that, that's an important study. Why so don't look, we you like know, that? You know, yeah. 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 Do, do, do the research later on and say, how, how, did, how was this? And yeah. I think enough of that evidence would they'd yeah. say, Jesus. It might you know, change that. Yeah, because it, it's, an, it, it's just another thing that you have to get through, and, it, and it's a tough job. Yeah. But don't, don't mm. uh, uh, you know, yeah. my judge are doing their work, but I think mm. it's good to always be reminded of the consequences yeah. of our mm. work. It's kind, of, it's kind of the true evaluation of how we're, whether Excellent. we're getting it right or not, yeah. isn't it, basically? Excellent. Speaking of getting it right, um, so we're talking about a bit of a clash of cultures here with um, between individual property rights and children. Yeah. Um, we're obviously here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. When you bring in that element, and your chapter talks a bit about it, of... Um, a whole nother tikanga and world view. How well does do the family courts represent Fano and and Tamariki Māori? Well, I think that I think the report, the, the review in two thousand nineteen, showed that there's a big gap there. Mm -hmm. um, we have made some movements. We appointed ten Māori family court judges, and we're going to appoint, I think, a few more. I haven't seen that happen yet. And I'm, I know most of them. I think that makes a difference because, first of all, Māori don't feel comfortable coming to the court because it doesn't. A lot of the law doesn't recognise their, mm. their, their values and, and then the person sitting there doesn't recognise. So mm. it's hard to, and it's a personal matter to be in a court with someone mm. who doesn't mm. recognise it. So oh, yeah. I, I, I think the court's becoming much more aware of it, but I don't think there's necessarily enough there judges. Uh, same for Pacifica, you know, I mean, the Rangatari courts, the Rangatari courts work very well for the, for the youth because it's Murray judges on the Marae works yeah. well. Mm. But if you come into a family court, it's not quite, uh, quite no. the same. And I think we have to, a point more uh, who understand tikanga well, who understand Murray values, because many of the time we, we, we just don't understand it, you know, and, and I think people don't give if, if they don't feel understood. Mm. You know, it would be like us going to a, a Muslim court and, 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 and we'd feel off beat, you mm. know, and when you've come from a different world, and, and I think the great strength of the Murray world is it's, it's developing its own way of doing things, and, and there's a real strength in that. Mm -hmm. And I think many just sort it out their own way mm. with their own whanau rather than do that. And, and I think that's, that's a real weakness of the, of, of, of the system because the system has been designed not with Murray in mind. I mean, Ring of Tamariki actors, but then, then, you know, they're the ones that get misused by the act. 69% of children in care are, are Maori. You know, yeah. if it wasn't for that, for that uh, program, that uh, newsroom, that, that would have still been going on. Yeah. And, and now there's, there's a bit more recognition and a recent decision by Jan Du showed how to interpret the act, you know. Um, in a way that mm. does take into account the Murray, because that had been glossed over. There were decisions saying, well, we can just we can use special guardianship to whip children off parents. Mm. And um, Judge Sharon Oaten, he said, well, no, that's, that goes against, that lo they lose their whakapapa if that's the case. Mm, yeah. And then uh, Jan Du did a great decision, McHugh and McHugh, where she went through all the various sections and said, this is how the wording should be interpreted, very yeah. carefully, mm. rather than just, because what we were doing, just rubbed, I've read yeah. some of the decisions with children removed by expert, it's just, uh, an affidavit comes in from a social worker saying, dysfunctional whānau, right, remove the children. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we're realising, well, even if it is dysfunctional, and that, that's a pretty pretty loaded yeah, word, yeah. we should be doing something to, yeah, to try and make them. it work rather yeah. than just remove the child. Yeah. But that, that's, a, that's a simple solution. Yeah. You know? yeah. Cost effective, but, yeah. but terrible for, for the whānau. Yeah. I think we've got actually answered all of our those questions, yeah. so I reckon we can skip to our quick fire question time. Yeah, happy, happy, yeah. 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 You ready? So this is uh, quick fire, as it as the name would suggest, ten questions with ten seconds to answer. Right, yeah, yes, yes. So yes. Um, Mark hasn't seen uh, these I questions. I haven't seen these questions. No, I'm, I'm naked, <laughs> naked before yeah. you. So what is the best part of your job? I think for me, I just love the students, being with the students. Oh. I see the new. I mean. I like writing and doing stuff, but I think I, I think I love the most when I see so many students coming out and doing things. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you write an article, and you, maybe two people read yeah. it if you like. Oh. But if a student 
comes out, you know, and yeah. most of them are, are well prepared before they get there. But if they come out and they really start, make, like you guys are doing, making a difference and doing yeah. work, I, 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 take, I just love that, you know. So, so uh, being in a classroom with students and through, in my first post grad class, no, I had many with this group this year, and they're all from all over the place. Big family law class. It's, it's just the sense of yeah. of their inquiry and their openness to ideas, and I just hope. It's just like yeah. young children are like that. Students, when they yeah. first come to university, are like that. And we, we can, because we get cynical and we get worn yeah. down. I, yeah. I'm That's always reminded, like Sarah, but yes, it's just the way the world can yeah. be. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so on that note, what kids should be thinking about going to law school? Well, I, I, I think it's, 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 some people just like, like the idea of, of, of being able to put an argument well for someone. Yeah. They like the idea of being able to, um, uh, look after someone else's interests. I think some people are driven to, to do that. Yeah. I mean, others are driven by different things, and I don't judge them for that. Some like the status of a lawyer. It looks like it's the right thing, the right <laughs> thing to do, but it doesn't sustain you. You've got yeah. to have a bigger purpose yeah. beyond yeah. yourself, and I think yeah. that, that's why I always encouraged you because that'll keep me coming to work yeah. in the morning. Yeah. If it's just a bit like I walk around and look like a lawyer, it's, it's pretty boring <laughs> after a while. <laughs> yeah, and then you realise that people don't really respect lawyers yeah. anyway. <laughs> Okay, uh, for their own mental health, should lecturers be adopting chat GPT to communicate with their students? I see today that there's a strike, which I am part of a union, and, and, um, and, and they're using chat to reply to the, to the HR people. It's quite, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's, it's quite funny to just send messages out, but uh, I'm not a technology fan, and, 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 and uh, although some people have been using it to test some of their essays, I don't use essay questions, I use problems so they, they, you can make individual ones up, but they're quite surprised how well they come back, yeah. and they're sending messages to the HR people that kind of using chat to say the messages they could be. It's quite funny, but, but on the other hand, I, I'm not... I'm not I wouldn't ever use, I, I, I had to be forced to use technology. I yeah. was the only person in the university using the overhead projector, they kept one just for me. <laughs> Cause see, I'm, I'm worried, because I've read a lot about this future stuff, with artificial intelligence, we won't be bound up any decisions. Yeah. Like even driving out here, I just put the thing on, but yeah. normally you look up a map, you'd work it yeah. out, you know, and you and you know, I think the Aboriginal people, they found water in place, no one ever, ever yeah. find it. We're losing those sort of skills yeah. to think for ourselves. Yeah. And when the technology breaks down, as we saw in the floods, <laughs> apart from the transistor radio, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> communication so I, 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 I just fear that I don't want generation because they're on Facebook they're being told yeah. TikTok tells them how to think I, I had I had nothing to do with any of that stuff yeah okay so you're now on a podcast <laughs> well, podcast is all right it might be on Instagram <laughs> I don't even know what Instagram anyway. is anyway <laughs> it's not all a right. prerequisite so don't no. worry what's the worst brilliant teaching idea that you've ever had <laughs> <laughs> I have had brilliant ideas I mean the thing I uh, I've never bought into these flip classes, you know, the idea that you come and the students are to know everything and you just need yeah. to ask them questions because oh, yeah. I think our guide is to guide them and then they can ask questions when they get yeah. a bit of a background. I, I, I don't think it's worth yeah, it. I, I have had the massive big family file. It, it just takes me weeks to mark. I've heard yeah. about that, you're right. But they learn so much from it. So I go, yeah. why do I do this? This is going to kill me. Six weeks of <laughs> sitting here, reading hundreds of these yeah. and giving them. But then I think at the end of it, when I see all their comments about how much yeah. they learned from it, yeah. it's worth it. So it's, it's a combination of, 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 a, of a really good idea. Yeah, well, they used to do that in Dunedin. But the university won't bloody give enough money to, to, to I used to give it to people who were yeah. too tired, and it was, it, it was really helpful. But I think it, it's, it's both a, an idea that students really love, yeah. but for me, it's a killer sometimes. Yeah. But then I, I, at the end of it, I say, no, that's why I'm here. Yeah. If they've learned something. And I get lots of people going to practice say, I can handle a file. Yeah. I can handle these bits. Because yeah. we, we, in university, we tend to just look at leading cases and look at that as a, yeah. leading cases are just the smallest tip of the yeah. iceberg. There's so much going, yeah. procedural stuff and negotiation, all those things that you do every day, you know, yeah. how, do, how do you end up in court? But we just focus on the court case. And I think that doesn't give a feel yeah. of, and they also have to play a client, which they, they really enjoy, you know, yeah. because they realize what it's like to be a client, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's both pretty a, humbling it's, it's both to be a client. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you learn a lot. Yeah, yeah you, learn you learn a lot. lot. You learn much more yeah. because <laughs> when you're the vulnerable one, you see things much more clearly. Yeah. That, that's, that's the one thing about being professionals. Unless you make yourself vulnerable, you don't see everything mm. because you're in charge. And these people just happen to reel around. So I, I, I always like when I'm in a vulnerable position, when I go to see a doctor or something, I have to, you know, yeah. how, how they treat you because it makes a difference. If mm. they don't explain things to you, you go away thinking, I'm probably going to die next yeah. week. You know? mm, yeah. We're not doing very well in the 10 seconds. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, 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 I thought I had 10 seconds to start. Yeah, no, just. it's brilliant. Um, uh, okay, if you were a judge, what underused tool would you m use to make a difference for children? It makes it hard to answer in 10 seconds, is not it? Yeah, well, I, I think some judges do do it. They try to get to know the children a little bit. I'm not that you're an expert. I have to be careful, but I do think, you, I, I think I would write judgments 
um, like an English judge did a lot more for the children, so they could read those judgments themselves to see why I decided what uh, I did. So yeah, I, I, in, in all cases, I think, because their interests are, are the highest, yeah. so I would write it for that child, for and the, the child parents can understand, understand it rather yeah. than kind of writing it legally. Yeah. So I think it's important. So that's that's what a I good would idea. Do. What's the best thing parents can do to protect their children when they separate? Never ever argue in front of them. Always be pleasant with each other in front of them. That's nice. the most important thing. Okay. And always show that they still care about the other parent. Okay. We'll skip what should they not do and go on. What's the Don't argue. <laughs> argue. Don't argue. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best thing a lawyer can do for the children of their client? Um, I think the best thing they can do is remind them constantly how important that every decision that's made is going to have an impact on them and their children will be there for the rest of their lives. So you've got to keep them in a not, not a judgmental way. How's this going to go for your children? That's the barometer. Yeah, and, and often, obviously I do it all the time with different and, and, and they, 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 their minds just change. Their yeah. face their face looks yeah. because they love their children. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah. But, but you get locked into... Yeah. Mm. Mindsets are so so important. Once you've got one mindset, you don't see anything else. That's the yeah. way it goes. Yeah. And an opinion about the other party, which is you are very greedy when really it's like <laughs> I want a house for my children. Should lawyers be trying to change the law and how would they do it? I th the first lecture I spend with my students, we know what's going wrong. That's why it's yeah. important what you're doing here. So we, we, we have inside knowledge and understanding. Yeah. See, this can be done better. We should be doing as much as we can because yeah. clients come and go. It's a one-off experience yeah. and they think, oh, what was yeah. that? In the parlance of Taylor Swift, why do high court judges got to be so mean? They're not always mean. I mean, I, I, some of them are former students and they're quite nice people. So I, I think it depends on it. I mean, I think the strength of the High Court judge is they do focus on the law. Mm, yeah. Not always. I mean, most of them, that, 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 that's their focus. So the risk of a specialist court is this is the way we always do it. And sometimes it gets outside what the law is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the High Court judges they don't understand the context as well as they should and, and miss other things. So they're not, they're not perfect in any way, but one of their strengths is the check that the law is being applied in a way. Mm. They also have their own prejudices and yeah. biases, which, they, which, which can be a disadvantage too. Yeah. So no system is perfect. Okay, this is the last one of the quick fires that weren't really quick fires. <laughs> <laughs> what is the one thing you would fix about the family court system? One thing I have talked about, and I'm 50-50 on it, they have in Australia where you have a specialist family court appeal um, thing, run it networks too well. I, I think the system has to be more user-friendly. I would bring in the counselling people. I would make it, a, it was meant to be a court where you had, you came into yeah. it and you had different services that would help and provide. Yeah. It's, just mm. gone back to, it's gone back to being a court, which is important at the final stage. But providing those other services on, on, on publicly yeah. funded made a big difference because it kind of cushioned the blow and often cases were sorted out before. Mm, we're we're now that. just a court and I think yeah. that that was all taken yeah. because it was said it's private so therefore the public shouldn't fund that other stuff. Yeah. I think we should because that's, yeah. as you said, where it works. That's the one thing yeah. I would go back to. I, yeah. I really think having seen it not action for many years, I thought it really made a difference yeah. and I've just we've just lost that now, I yeah. think. And, okay. and a court hearing, as you all know, is, is the last place to try, <laughs> try and build good relationships between people. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Our last section is called the best question ever, uh, and for you, Professor Mark Henderson, <laughs> that question is, you are a teacher of young minds, a critic and law reformer, a parent and devoted grandparent, but these are dark times. What do you feel hopeful about? Oh, I always feel hope. I'm a positive person. Yeah, I, I always feel that you've got to get up each day and, and, and having grandchildren, oh God, I can't describe <laughs> how much love and hope it gives to you. Yeah, I spend most of the weekend seeing my grandchildren, and uh, one's three, nearly four, now one's six, nearly seven, and it was a wee, wee one at three months old. But you just look at them and, mm. and the positive view of life they have, and we've got to be careful that we don't put our own problem. They just see, yeah. like my wee granddaughter is still asking about, why is Putin doing what he's doing? You know, she worries about that, and yeah. I was trying to explain to her. My wife's from Vietnam, she's been through wars, and she's very interested in it, and, and, and she gets worried about it. And the wee fellow, he loves books about monsters, and he has nightmares. <laughs> but th that's the, it's, the, it's the glint in their eye yeah. and the positiveness when they're with, with you that I think, I think every generation is like that. As yeah. you get older, you can say, oh, well, you know, they're not doing it our way, but they adjust. The great thing about human beings is that we're, we're and the key to survival of all long term is ability to adapt to our circumstances. Yes. We don't have any control over anything. Everything is uncertain, yeah. but we have to have open minds and adaptability, and that's what keeps me going. It's mm. a challenge every day, actually, because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. once again, it comes back. And to I try the to children. feed that to my students, and but I get I get it from my from my from my. Yeah, I think you don't want to surround yourself with with, with people who are who are negative about it because I think a mindset. It's a great book by Carol Dweck. Mindset affects everything we mm -hmm. see. If we have a negative view of everything, everything will be negative. Mm. I mean, I, I often sometimes say to people, if you just change how you see a person, they suddenly look different because you're only seeing the good qualities then. Yeah. If you see them negative, yeah. oh, there they go again. Look at them. Look at them, the way yeah. they're standing. Terrible, yeah. you know. Mm. So, so I think negative things 
you see more negativity, positive things, you see. Every day I see an old woman walking down the street, she's put a wee bag and she, I think, good on you, into the window. Yeah. I stop and talk mm. to her. Yeah. I stop and talk to people. So I always find life interesting. I think it's hopeless to go for a walk with me anywhere. You'll, 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 you'll take about four hours to get <laughs> in. It's like my mum at the supermarket. Well, that, but, but it's beautiful because everyone has their story yeah. and, and it just, it's that yeah. social connection that keeps yeah. you going and, and, uh, and everyone in their own way is battling along. We get locked into our own little negativities and mm. it closes so much, so much off. And yeah. I think that's totally relevant to what we're all talking mm. about. You have Having to have that horrible negative view of the other person and not yeah, looking absolutely. to the children with optimism. And well, you'll have seen many cases yeah. and, and, and you talked about your own case very positively, Sally, yeah. that people get there. It's yeah. just, and you said it beautifully at the beginning. It's like yeah. climbing up a mountain. You're guiding them through, yeah. trying to avoid the fall down yeah. a crevice and get up again. <laughs> but you just like one-year-olds fall over and get up again. Again, we, yeah. we have to yeah. keep 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 yeah. keep them keep them moving, you know, because yeah. people do come out the other end. Yeah, mostly, you know, mostly, yeah. you know. Sadly, yeah. sometimes they don't, but mostly they do. And mm. that's it's that I, I, the song I play at the beginning of every family law class is my favourite song of all time, The Hollies. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Yeah. The road is long, yeah. but his welfare is my concern, or her welfare is my concern. Yeah. We're, we're going to get through this because mm. it makes a big difference. All the people have was pro bono. They ring you up and you have a chat and listen to them and say, right getting that little bit of this is what you need to do yeah. here and try this and then come back because yeah. it's just it's because because they're an emotional state when a, yeah. when a breakup happens and it's hard to think about anything so yeah. it's little steps as you said yeah. and little things and suddenly you, you get through you start to let go and you start to see another life mm. but it's very hard for a start that's why it's such a tough job you've got people one side's really angry they didn't yeah. expect this to happen the other yeah. side's already moved through anger mm. down to and then they feel guilty about yes, it and, and, and so they're all in different mind mm, eventually yeah. they get back to that sort of yeah, yeah it's like uh, stranger things they're all on the upside down i know and it takes a while before mm. they um and that just takes time and it mm. takes people being there just making sure that they're, they're mm. making the right things not not falling into traps mm. where they they, they make yeah. it, Whenever we're in emotional states, we do the wrong things. Oh. We drink too much. We, we send crazy emails. We, yeah. we take risk, oh, we do yeah. risky behavior. We do all the things yeah. we shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's that, that's being human. Yeah. And I've got to learn to say that yeah. will happen sometimes. Yeah. I always say to my students, get them if they're having a bad day just to give you a quick call and just say, yeah. everything's all right. We're on track. Yeah. You know? yeah. and it's still things. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, um, Mark. That's been an amazing session. It's a bit longer than normal. Right? Yeah, no, it. that's you great. Do a bit of cutting over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Divorce Cafe. Uh, we've enjoyed our chat with Professor Mark Hennigan from uh, Auckland University. If you enjoyed the topic, uh, look at our other episodes. Um, there'll be an article alongside this one and more information that you can check in on. Uh, and join us next time. <laughs>